It says, when you enter the land the Lord your God has given you, do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or who is a medium or a spiritist, or who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. You know, during the time of Israel's history, almost the entire world at that time was either polytheistic or pantheistic. And we'll talk about those definitions, but there were very few people who believed in just one God. The Israelites knew there was only one God for them all. But unfortunately, the people all around them had all sorts of practices, including seances and consulting the dead, psychics. In fact, when you read this list, you would think that you're reading what's happening in today's world. Because on our television, we, we saw the hit TV show, Crossing Over with John Edwards, where he brought seances in the living rooms of millions of Americans, introducing people to the concept of reaching into the other world, contacting the dead to get messages for the people of today. And then we have movies like The Sixth Sense that glamorize to a certain degree, the idea of psychics and ability to contact the dead. And then, of course, how about the biggest uh, hit books to ever reach the children's market, the Harry Potter books, that introduce white witches, good witches, and so that introduce children to, the, to another idea of the supernatural. Not simply the God who is the supernatural, but another world that's out there. Another way to tap in to the unseen world. So what's happening is we're seeing a proliferation of the occult in a way we've never seen before. You say to me, Pastor, what, what does that word occult mean? Well, it's the Latin word which means concealed or cover over. It is secret. It's secret knowledge or supernatural knowledge. Now, let me start off by saying this. I believe that God himself can give us supernatural knowledge. In fact, that's how we got saved. How did you come to really discover that Jesus is the Son of God? It's real simple. Flesh and blood did not reveal it, but the Father who's unseen gave you that supernatural knowledge. So it's, the Bible calls it revelation knowledge. So I do believe in the supernatural knowledge that God can convey even the future in our lives. He can give us direction in our lives. He can tell us what we should be doing in our lives. There is a supernatural force called God who can guide us. But listen to me. Satan has invented his ways to divert people away from the one true God. And he's invented systems and techniques to get people to search for the supernatural. But that search is going to lead to not only a dead end but it's going to lead into the habitation of demons themselves. This is why God was so animate. He's warning them. This is detestable. You know, that word detestable, is, it's the strongest word I think you find in the Hebrew language where it absolutely means disgusting. There is nothing worse than you could ever do than to do this, to start consulting the dead, mediums or spiritists, engaging in witchcraft. But see, today we think those are harmless activities, but God considers them more serious than what most of society thinks. So what happens? People get interested because the world starts to push, not the true religion, which is Jesus Christ as the Son of God, they start to push other religions like witchcraft and sorcery and psychic powers. If someone has the power to contact the dead, has the power to know the future, has a power through the use of objects to have some sort of divine insight, then they don't realize that they are under a curse if they practice these things. And that's why, I, uh, well, my book is entitled Breaking Curses, Experiencing Healing. 
because it is time that we break the curse of the occult over our lives. And I know you might think to yourself, it's just innocent. It's, it, I just, you know, Pastor, I look at my horoscopes. I, I just want to see. I don't really take it seriously. Well, maybe you don't, but maybe there's a part of you that does. And maybe you're guiding your life through things that are not scriptural, that are actually very dangerous to your spiritual life. You know, Paul said in, in Ephesians 4, 27, he said, don't give the devil a foothold. You know what a foothold is? It's just a small opening in the door. And at first, these things are just like a small open in the door. They don't seem significant. You're not really that into it. At least you think you're not, but it's just a small opening. And how many of y'all know you just need a little small opening in the door before you got a bunch of flies flying into your living room? How many of y'all been having problems with flies lately? All you have to do is just a little, little hole in the screen door is enough to get the flies coming in. And you know, Jesus actually called Satan the Lord of the flies. That's what Belzeba means. And so all you need is a little small opening. Before you know it, these demons will fly right into your house. And they'll start to affect your prosperity. You'll wonder, I don't understand why things aren't working. Why is it that all my relationships keep falling apart? Why is it that every time I try to make money, I lose it, go bankrupt? I don't understand why, why I'm always constantly being plagued with illness after illness. I, I don't understand what's going on in my life. And you don't realize you opened up a little door for the enemy to fly in and to affect your life. That's why it's important that we shut the door, bolt it, and make sure that Satan has nowhere to come into our life. Now, let me explain why is it that, we, that people fall into the occult. Number one, we're all spiritual beings. We're not simply body and mind. We're also spirit beings made in the image of God. So there is something inside of us that tells us there's a world that we cannot see. Of course, that world is God, heaven. We don't see him. We don't see the angels around us. So we all know because we're spiritual beings, we, we can believe in the unseen. Now, because we're natural beings, we also believe in science. Now, what is science? Science is uh, the art of the natural. In other words, you take what you can see and observe, and you come up with certain conclusions based on what you see and what you observe. But it's all based on natural things. But there's a limitation to science. As much as people thought science would solve all the world's happiness, notice people are still miserable and unhappy. Because science can only solve physical problems but this this is where religion comes in religion is man's attempt to try to find the unseen world so because we're spiritual beings we have a longing naturally to want to know about the world of the spirit we all want to know about life after death who isn't curious about what it's like everyone is who isn't saddened that a loved one dies and you wouldn't like to talk to them just one last time? You see, and because we have this longing, sometimes we begin to be diverted by Satan's schemes to start looking into the unknown in unauthorized manner. 